Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at the ninth installment of what I like to call Fat Shaming Fridays, where we take a look at various responses to this. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. Will we ever run out of these stories? Um, I don't know. Just like ticked off Thins Tuesdays, there seems to be a never-ending slew of different fat shaming stories. What are your predictions? Uh, fat shamed at the dentist? Fat shamed at the car wash? Fat shamed at the grocery store, perhaps? Who knows? As usual, if I laugh at any of these stories, I'm not laughing at the fact that somebody got fat shamed or bullied. I'm just laughing at the ridiculousness of the situation. In order to replenish my dignity and help me deal with the shame, I must first apply comb to mustache. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. I've been waiting for this one. So I teach aqua fitness classes. I actually own my own aquatic fitness company. Humble brag, okay. And what people from the outside don't see is that I have a stomach disease that causes me to gain weight and bloat and all these other issues. A stomach disease? Are you gonna talk about what your stomach disease is or? I am in Topeka, Kansas, and for where I am, my company is a big deal. We have about 900 uh, class members all in all. So yeah, we get a lot of attention, sometimes from the news, sometimes from Fit Motivation, who I've filmed with, etc. And my TikToks have started to kind of mini blow up. Anyway, I actually start dreading this because any time that I am featured on the local news, or any time that I am shared on social media. Dude, enough humble brags, we get it, you were on the news. I don't mean to brag, but uh, I'm kind of a big deal around here. The local news came out, they let me be an anchor for a few days, it was amazing. What a waste of time uh, the local news is. They come out, they're like, hey, you've got an aquatic fitness center? Let's interview you. How is that news? Among the first comments I ever see, every single time it never fails, is oh, Watch out for whales. Um, okay. <laughs> I love how this is like her crowning moment. Like, this is where you're supposed to be like, oh my god. Um, okay. <laughs> what do you mean? The first comment you get is, watch out for whales. The first comment you get from what? When you go on the local news, the first comment you always get is, watch out for whales. Where are you getting this comment? Are you talking about going and looking at the comment section of a video that you were featured in? Is this local news on YouTube? Because uh, I don't know where there would be a comment section where somebody would say, watch out for whales. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that uh, that never happened. Especially considering this gotcha look on her face. See, told you guys, fat phobia is super real. People can see your story on the surface and be so mean without knowing your full background. So people need to know your full background before they go making judgments about your aquatic fitness company. But you shouldn't be mean to someone just because they are overweight. You don't... Right, I agree. ...know what they're going through. And this has been said a million times. But when it's some... You've been told to watch out for whales a million times? Dude, that is such a lame insult, and I'm having a hard time believing that this actually happened. Something that I can't really control, and you're out here calling me a whale? You can't control your weight? So your undisclosed stomach issue causes you to gain weight, and um, we don't know what you're going through. So we don't know what you've been through, and we don't know what's causing you to gain weight. You're not going to share it with us, but uh, it's some kind of stomach issue that makes you pull calories from the air, I guess. Plenty of people with all kinds of issues like PCOS, thyroid conditions, etc., uh, are still able to lose weight. You just have to adjust your diet and exercise program accordingly. When my job is to literally lead people through aquatic fitness for their health to change their lives. Okay, pat yourself on the back a little bit more. If somebody makes fun of you for your weight, I don't see how it's related to you teaching aquatic fitness. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, no, no, I would never fat shame this person or anybody else, but it's funny how they're like, you can't make fun of me. I teach aquatic fitness. Like, what? What does one have to do with the other? What are you talking about? I don't believe that this story happened at all. Nobody's like, watch out for the whales. 
like because you're teaching aquatic fitness i guess and you're in the water is it nothing but obese people in your aquatic fitness class aquatic fitness might be a good start for uh people that are less than mobile i think if you can't really move around good perhaps exercising in the water is a good start it's low impact on your joints uh, you can float around it's easier next tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed oh so many to choose from the wildest one would be when i was 19 working in retail and i had gauze wrapped around my hand from a second degree burn and a customer asked me what happened and i said it's a burn and they were like what happened you burn yourself on the oven because you couldn't wait for the food to get out maybe maybe that's what happened and he proceeded to ask me if I got it from reaching into the grease to get the french fries. <laughs> Why is that so similar to what I said? What the heck? Am I psychic, dude? What the heck? Okay, so I was just joking around and being hyperbolic, but uh, then they go on to say that that's exactly what the heck happened. What? I'll take things that never happened for 500, Alex. There's no way that somebody came up and asked you if you reached your hand into the fryer to grab the french fries by hand because you're so obese. Although they never said because you're so obese. You just assume that that's what they meant, right? Because in your story, they're just like, what'd you do? Reach your hand into the deep fryer? They never mentioned your weight. I have a hard time believing that somebody would randomly say that to somebody at a store, like one of the employees or whatever. When I go to the store and I see the employees doing X, Y, or Z, uh, it doesn't prompt me to go up to them and fat shame them about anything. Why would I care? Why would I go around telling people, like, oh, you've got a bandage on your hand. You must have been cutting cheese and then you got your hand in there because you were so obese that you just couldn't wait or <laughs> whatever. Like, no, dude, I don't buy it. I paused, asked him if he had just called me fat. Um, no, he said you reached your hand into the fryer while it was still hot. What do you mean? And he was like, uh, uh, uh. and his wife was like, oh my God, he would never. Dude, this did not happen. Out of all the things that didn't happen, this didn't happen the most. <laughs> mm, he just did. Come get your man, because I'm not helping him. Right, and then you woke up. Are we going to have nothing but a bunch of outlandish ones today? I hope so. I love the ones where they make up stuff that clearly did not happen. They're like, I was working at a Denny's one time and this guy came in and he was like, yeah, you should be working here because you're fat. And I was like, no, like, dude, none of, this, none of this happened, bro. It's bollocks. It's a bunch of bollocks. Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. Oh, I have been holding on to this story for so long. Have you? Does that mean it's really reals? So about 10 years ago, I was 17 years old and I was working at a coffee shop in my local grocery store. I guarantee you can guess which coffee shop. Um, no, N not at all. Now this specific kiosk closed at 7 p.m. 7.10 is the current time in the story I'm telling. This woman comes up to me and she's like, oh, what time do you close? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry we closed at seven. And she's like, oh no, I really just wanted a caramel macchiato for me. She said a caramel macchiato. Well, you should have said, lady, it's caramel. And then you should have kicked her in the chest and closed the doors to the store. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I know that it's 10 minutes past your closing time, but may I please get a caramel macchiato? Caramel macchiato? Uh, I don't know what that is. I know what a caramel macchiato is. By the way, what's that on your shirt? Is it caramel? I've been saying caramel this whole time. Wait, what? Something on my shirt. Boosh! Don't you ever mispronounce caramel again. And then I woke up. <laughs> I have all these delusions where I'm the hero in the story, like... Me and my husband. And being the nice person that I am, I said, you know what? Let me just make you one. I hadn't cleaned the espresso machine yet, so what was it gonna hurt? And it... And it wasn't good enough. She was like, what? You are obese, madam. First you correct me on the pronunciation of caramel, and now you're sitting there being obese and not making my coffee? How dare you? I ended up hurting my heart, but I'll get to that part in a second. Now this lady's mentioning to me that she's going to Disneyland tomorrow, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love Disneyland. Anyone that knows me knows I go almost weekly. You go to Disneyland weekly? Why is that so disturbing to me? I don't <laughs> So far, that's the thing that stands out the most about this story and disturbs me for some reason. Who goes to Disneyland Weekly, dude? 
You're like, I just can't get enough of Space Mountain. Right, guys? Disneyland sucks, honestly. Uh, it ha they don't have any good roller coasters over there, man. Six Flags Magic Mountain, uh, way better. Actually, any of the Six Flags locations are better than Disneyland. And all those people walking around in costumes, it makes me sick. Am I the only one that's creeped out by people parading around in those like Goofy and Mickey and Minnie costumes? Probably, I'm probably the only one that's creeped out by that. I'm not like a afraid or anything, I mean, I'm not afraid, you're afraid. I'm not scared. You're scared. If I'm given the chance and- Okay, that's the most bizarre part of the story. Like, who goes to Disneyland every week? This reminds me of Disney adults. Curtis Connor made a video about this. Uh, people that are into Disney stuff as adults are very weird, dude. A lot of people don't really have a personality, so they latch on to TV shows and theme parks and cartoons and all this type of stuff. And I'm just super excited for this lady. And then I tell her, I'm like, oh, my dream job would be to be a Disney princess. Uh, what? You're just... <laughs> I hate to be Buzz Killington here, but your dream job would be to be a Disney princess. What? Why? You know you have to deal with a bunch of snot-nosed kids doing that job, right? They're always running up like, ah, let me hug you. Let me get a picture with you. Shut up, Timothy. Get away from me. Can't you see I've been drinking? <laughs> that Disney princess smell like vodka and is a man <laughs> that's why they never hired me man I wanted to be Ariel <laughs> how dare you I feel bad for this person I don't know why I just do and this woman looks me dead in my eyes dead in your eye fam and says but you have to be pretty and skinny to be a Disney princess Oh, snap, son. This never happened. Be quiet. <laughs> so she didn't just say that you were overweight, and she also said that you were ugly. Oh, my goodness. If this really happened, man, that's pretty rough. That's pretty rough. I'm sorry. She's like, you? Not only are you rotund, you're also unappealing to the eye. Who the hell calls other people ugly and fat right to their face? I know it happens sometimes. Sometimes those Karens, uh, am I right? I didn't even know what to do in that moment. I just gave her her coffee. Here's what you should have done. You were not only ugly, but you were also fat. Oh yeah, is that so? Well, uh, your caramel macchiato's ready. Here you go! And you just pour it right on her face and down her shirt. And then she's like, ah, my skin, it's melting. <laughs> and just stop talking. But I went home and cried for about an hour and a half. Big deal, I cry for two hours nightly. Now, it wasn't the fact that she told me I couldn't be a Disney princess. I know this. You know this? What? What kind of bizarre high standards are you holding these fictional characters to? You're like, I know I could never be a Disney princess. They are far too grand for me. Like, what? It's just a stupid job wearing a crappy costume. What do you mean? You could never make it to the upper echelons of society where Disney princesses reside. What are you talking about? It's just a crappy job, probably getting paid minimum wage. You're burning up in this hot suit in the freaking hot sun, dude. Like, uh, no, dude, be glad that you don't have that job. Snot-nosed kids running up to you, pulling on your coattails all day. If they have coattails, I don't know. I don't really know what the heck that really is. I think that's a saying from long ago that no longer makes sense these days. <laughs> I'm all living in the past. Keep using all these old time sayings. Yeah, she was a roustabout, see? Yeah, a wise guy, huh? It's the fact that I did something so nice for her and she looks me dead in my eyes and tells me I'm basically ugly and fat. I was so insecure. Well, hopefully you've learned a lesson from this. Don't ever help anyone, ever. I don't know what you were thinking. This is a very bizarre story. Especially at the time and it broke my heart. What? Why? Why did this break your- Dude, why are you so obsessed with Disney and Disney princesses? This is what broke your heart. She's like, you could never be a princess. It was at that moment that I crumbled. Like, what? Why? <laughs> why? It's such a stupid thing to say to somebody. It's not even worth getting upset over. That's like if somebody told me, you'll never be Magneto from the X-Men. Like, what? What? Okay, I'm not- mad about that that's such a specific and bizarre insult and plus i don't give a crap about tv or disneyland like oh i don't know it's weird man it's really weird to get upset about something like that it shook you did it shake you i wish i could see this woman now and stick up for myself finally and stick up for yourself finally uh i wish you would have stuck up for yourself back then 
When she made the rude remark to you, you should have been like, oh yeah, and then you just take her coffee and just pour it in the sink while you keep looking her in the eye like, oh, you want this caramel macchiato? Miss can't pronounce caramel. Here you go. You just dump it right in the sink. And then she's like, no, my caffeine. All right, that was weird. That was very bizarre. Uh <laughs> I like it though. That was a good story. You'll never be the little mermaid, dude. What are you even doing? <laughs> Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. I'll go first. So I've had my fair share of being fat shamed. It's so crazy. The other day I was looking at my older pictures like from high school from like 10 years, 10 to 12 years ago. And I'm like, I wasn't even that fat. I'm fatter now. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's crazy how that works. At that point, I was like, between 170 to 180 there about. Dude, I love her accent. So you were just a small fat at that time. And then I got diagnosed with PCOS and then that's when I started to gain mad weight. And then You started to gain mad weight after you were diagnosed with PCOS. That's interesting because you know that you had the PCOS your whole life, but only after you got diagnosed with it did you start to gain massive weight. What does that tell you? It's almost like in your mind you're like, hey, I got the PCOS, I can't lose weight. And then you just start eating and not exercising because you threw in the towel and then you started gaining weight. I could be wrong, but I think it's very telling that you started gaining weight after you learned of your diagnosis. You didn't just get it once you got diagnosed with it. You had it your whole life before that. Hit the 200 and then just never come out of it. But aside from that, back to the fat shaming story. Um, one of the things that I can't get out of my memory was how my father's side of family was very fat phobic ever since we were kids. And I was the plumier grandchild as of. The plumier grandchild? Always. And I, back, fast forward to university. I was, my first year at university, my dad's aunt lived in the area, like around Kingston area and whatever. And I went there for a weekend to visit. And I never went back, to be honest, because I never forgot what she did. And I was there and she was like giving me a tour of the house and whatever. And she showed me the bathroom. And she said in the most chest of ways, I hope the bathroom big enough for you. I hope I can hold in there. And I laughed like, oh. Wait, what? Hold on. I hope the bathroom big enough for you. I hope I can hold in there. And I laughed like, she said the bathroom's not big enough for you? Okay, what are you, what is that a joke? I like, I mean, I said nothing. I like around dinner time. Before dinner time, she kept asking me if I was hungry, the most hungry, because me eat so often and whatever. Side note, I don't eat that often. So before dinner, she kept asking you if you were hungry. Honestly, this seems pretty accommodating. Um, I don't, I don't think, see how this is fat shaming. They keep offering you food, they're like, hey, Becky, or whatever the heck your name is, uh, you want a cinnamon bun? You want a burger? You want a slice of cheese? Like, so she fat shamed you by offering you food repeatedly. It's so crazy how people think that because you're fat, you eat enough more or you eat unhealthy more than everybody else. It's so crazy. Um, yeah, that is crazy how people think that since you're obese, you eat like an obese person. That's weird. Why would they think that? Do they not know that you can be morbidly obese even though you've never ate even once? They need to get with the times, dude. Come on, this is the current year. Um, so she kept asking me if I was hungry. I said, no, I'm not hungry. Okay, this partially seems like fat shaming, but it also kind of seems like she's just being a good host. When somebody's trying to dunk on somebody for being overweight, do they constantly offer them food? Like, hey dude, you want something to eat? I got some grub over here. Like, usually when people fat shame people, they're telling somebody to not eat. And then we were on, when we were on the dinner table having dinner, she kept giving me more, off, offering, offering me more. Okay, well this doesn't seem like fat shaming at all. It seems like she's being a good host, like I said. I don't know, man. I don't think when somebody fat shames you that they just keep offering you more food, right? Unless she was a feeder, who knows? She's like, you're so obese. Here, you want some more mashed potatoes? Here, dude, have more, have more. Usually when somebody keeps offering you food, it's because they think that you're not big enough. They're like, look at you. You're nothing but skin and bones. Have some more mashed potatoes. Did you get enough green bean casserole? Sorry. She kept offering more. I said, I'm most hungry, man. I'm most hungry. Because you're big and fat. You have to eat, to see, to maintain your... She's like, shoot, I said... Okay, I didn't understand any of that. I don't want to tell any lies, but basically she said, 
Me, I go eat off most of the food in here because me fat. And I'm like, no. I might be fat, but I don't have that big of an appetite. I don't know everything me eat either. Okay, so you're obese, but you don't have a big appetite. All right. You understand? And I even said to her, like, the reason, because the first greeting she gave me too was like, oh, you get so fat. Oh, you're still fat. You're even fatter than before. What the heck? That's how she greeted you? All right, I'm going to go ahead and say that this person was fat shaming. And she's like, look at you. You're even fatter than before. Like, what the heck? You haven't even said hi and you're saying this to me? And I'm like, I gained a lot of weight because I have PCOS and I keep gaining weight and my weight fluctuates. And the whole of them are laugh and whatever. And it just reminded me of when I was a kid. And she was like, I have PCOS as well. I've just adjusted my diet and exercise regime accordingly. And I'm at my grandparents' house and they always make fat jokes and, I, and start laughing. And I would always want to cry. And I, All right, well, that, that's messed up. I would go home to my mom and cry. So, yeah. Stop fat sh shaming people, especially children. We don't forget that because that's how I grew up with. Okay, and then it cut off right there in the middle of her speaking. That was messed up uh, towards the end there where she kept getting fat shamed and it made her cry. But I would think if somebody keeps offering you food, they're not fat shaming you. She was fat shaming you and then she started acting like William Hornby. She's like, here, eat some more food. I want to watch you eat this food right here. You're so obese, dude. You want to have some macaroni and cheese? <laughs> You're like, what? You're sending mixed signals. You said I was obese and you keep sliding over the side dishes to me. What's happening? And those were just a few examples of fat shaming stories for this Friday. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're interested in some merch, go to my main channel page and click on the store tab. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.